Good morning. It is great to have you with us this morning, on this beautiful morning, on this morning that God has made. Isn't it great that we can gather together, even, even remotely, but to be together in spirit, worshiping God together? If you're joining on Facebook, please share. And if you're joining on YouTube, please press the subscribe button. And here we are. It's already, you know, we're well into November already. And so we're nearing Thanksgiving. And as we near Thanksgiving, we're beginning our grocery collection um, activity, um, community service for in coordination with the Soup Bowl. The Thanksgiving Meal Project, that's the word that I'm trying to come up with. And so if you would, come by the church, grab a bag. They're at the front door. They're at the bridge welcome desk. And there's a list of groceries that, that you can collect and put in the bag and bring back. And we ask that you bring them back by November 18th, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Well, a week before Thanksgiving. And uh, then we'll deliver these to the, to the soup bowl for distribution to people that are in need. So we're kicking off the Thanksgiving Meal Project in coordination with the Community Soup Bowl once again. So please participate in this. And if you would, please continue to connect with us. Um, if you haven't checked it out, we have a new website with you know, a lot of information. We, we, we hope that it's easy for you to navigate and get the information that you need. So check it out. It's fumct.org. And connect with us through social media. You know, as you know, we, we still actively pray. And we're praying for you. And we would like to join you in your specific prayers. So if you would, connect with us. Let us know what your specific prayers are so that we might join you praying with you in those prayers. Now let's turn our hearts and minds to worship.
Please join me as we affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. We come today to share the sacrament of baptism for Henry Harrison Thomas, the son of Josh and Allison Thomas. Friends, baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, through which grace we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs of life eternal. Those receiving the sacrament are thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated into the fellowship of Christ's holy church. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God, which holy privilege must not be denied them. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Josh and Allison, do you present Henry Harrison Thomas for holy baptism and confess your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We do. Do you therefore accept as your bounden duty and privilege to live before Henry Harrison a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care that he be brought up in the Christian faith, that he be taught the holy scriptures, and that he learn to give reverent attendance upon the private and public worship of God? Will you endeavor to keep Henry under the ministering guidance of the church until he, by the power of God, shall accept for himself the gift of salvation and be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's holy church? Henry Harrison, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Members of the household of faith, I commend to your love and care this child, whom we will this day recognize as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that Henry Harrison may grow in the knowledge and love of God the Father through Jesus Christ, our Savior? Amen. 
Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, grant that Henry Harrison, as he grows in years, may also grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that by the restraining and renewing influence of the Holy Spirit, he may ever be a true child of yours, serving you faithfully all his days. So guide and uphold Allison and Josh, that by loving care, wise counsel, and holy example, they may lead Henry Harrison into that life of faith whose strength is righteousness and whose fruit is everlasting joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you now and forevermore. Amen. Hey, Savannah, if there was a pie cost and a dog that got in a race, who would win? About six or seven dollars. <laughs> hey, John, hey, John, why does a golfer wear two pair of pants? In case he gets a hole in one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, hey, first kids, what kind of jokes do you like? Do you like the good old knock knock who's there jokes? Do you like a why the chicken cross the road kind of joke? Or. One of these kind of like dad jokes. Um, you know, they call them dad jokes because they're kind of like dads. Kind of cheesy, not always real funny. But is that always true? I mean, I know a couple of really funny dads. Let's think about what we find funny. You know, humor can get us thinking as well as laughing. A lot of jokes are based on cruelty or stereotypes or rudeness and sometimes at the expense of others. So, you know, most of the time when you hear a joke that starts off with like, um, so three guys walked into a, or a um, joke that starts with, uh, what's the difference between a, or a, yo mama. Those jokes are most likely problematic. Sadly, it's not unusual for us to hear jokes that are made based on other people's differences. So today we're gonna talk about Zacchaeus. And in his time, he was probably the butt of a lot of jokes. Not only was he a tax man, but he was also very, very short. Now, I know a thing or two about a short joke. That may be why I like <laughs> really high heels so much. Um, not only do high heels make me feel so tall and I can um, not be overlooked in a crowd very easily, I can see over some things, I can also uh, reach things that I couldn't reach before. You know, maybe if Zacchaeus had a pair of like platform sandals, maybe he wouldn't have had to climb that tree to see Jesus. But let me tell you this, even if he didn't climb the tree, Jesus would have still seen him. Because Luke tells us that Jesus said, I have come to seek and save the lost. Jesus was looking for Zacchaeus. He wanted to spend time with the guy that everybody made fun of, that nobody liked, and that honestly wasn't a really nice guy himself. But when Zacchaeus met Jesus, his whole life changed. Not only was he happier, he was nicer, and he was more charitable. You know, it's funny how a little bit of Jesus can make a big difference. So this week, think about what kind of jokes you like. What makes you laugh? Hey, have a grown-up help you type up your favorite joke and share it with us on our Facebook page. You know, First Kids has a group that's linked to our church, and we'd love to have you join us there for information that keeps you up to date and a good laugh.
Let us pray. Father, we praise your holy name. You are holy, you're pure, you're divine, you created all things, you breathe life into each of us. We know that you are love and we know that you love us. You're, you're intimate, yet you're everywhere. You're infinite, you're all over creation at once. And we know that you know the intimate details about each of us. You know us better than we know ourselves. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who, who surrounds us and dwells within us and, and enlightens our minds and convicts us. Thank you for your angels protecting us. Thank you for your, for your glory revealed through your creation, through your people, through, through the body of Christ. We bow before you. We bow before you, worshiping you, because what else can we do when we encounter you? 
make our lives better because our life is better when lived in communion with you. We seek you, we desire you, we need you, we, we seek your spirit of unity, your spirit of forgiveness. Please help us, help us rebuild bonds of trust. Help us to remove the false faces we wear, to offer ourselves to one another with grace, with compassion and love for, for that person who grieves and is not quite sure how to face the day. Please fill them with your strength, fill them with your love, wrap your arms around them, comfort them. Fill them with your loving, peaceful presence and give them eyes to see the loving, grace-filled people you're placing in their path. For that person in recovery who's concerned about unique situations that might arise, we, we ask for your special protection. Shield them, guard them from temptation, remove them from situations that might cause harm. Fill them with your comfort, your peace, your strength, your life abundant. Give them your confidence to face every situation, knowing you are with them and dwelling within them, that you are lifting them up. Father, for that person with physical needs, we pray for your holy healing touch. We ask for total healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. Thank you, thank you for our health. Thank you for our, your holy healing touch in our lives, for the bonds of love we experience for this, for this beautiful sacred space where you allow us to worship you. Even though we may be gathering virtually, we are together in spirit worshiping you. You are sovereign. You have all power, all authority. There's nothing you cannot do, and we know you love us. We know you desire that we experience full, satisfying, abundant life through you, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. Help us experience your life abundant. Help us remove obstacles in our lives, blocking us from your life abundant. Help us experience you in a new and refreshed and fulfilling way. We ask all this for your glory. And we thank you for all your blessings, Father. We offer ourselves as holy, living sacrifices. And as we collect the offering, we, we offer these gifts as a, as a sign of all we offer, as a sign of our lives dedicated to you. Please take them, use them. Magnify them, multiply them, make, make these gifts and, and, and us more than we could ever be without you. May it all be for your glory. And we continue praying as Jesus taught, saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Trace. 
Reading from Luke 19, 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, 
Today, salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Last Sunday, we celebrated All Saints Day in traditions. Well, our series on table talk, transformation through conversation commenced in the bridge from the scripture, John, the second chapter, verses one through 12, a family wedding. So we continue in this series on table talk transformation through conversation. And from the passage of scripture that Jerry read from us, I want us to focus on this thought this morning, an unexpected meal, an unexpected meal. Determination brings focus to opportunity and pushes us to achieve in spite of the difficulties that threaten us. The 23rd Psalm verse five says, God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, my obstacles. The word obstacle is a compound word taken from two words, obstruction and tackle. So then determination is the ability to tackle every obstruction we face. We can accomplish nothing without determination. If we are not determined, nobody can help us. But if we are determined, nobody can stop us. It takes determination to overcome every challenge and opposition. The missionary Hudson Taylor says, pressure where it lies either comes between or pushes us toward God. In other words, never let our obstacles block our determination. Let our obstacles push us closer to God. 1 John 4 and 4 says, you belong to God. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Our faithfulness to God is intact because of our determination. Determination determines direction. Determination determines direction. A blind man walks down a busy street with his guide dog leading the way. And they come to the corner of an extremely busy intersection. And instead of stopping and waiting until it is safe, the dog walks straight ahead without stopping, causing a lot of loud horns, screeching tires, and swerving near misses by other drivers but somehow they make it safely across the street where the dog stops on the opposite corner. The man then reaches into his coat pocket and pulls out a cookie and holds it out for his dog. A bystander observes this act and is absolutely shocked. He walks over and asks the man, how in the world can you reward him after what he just did? He could have gotten you killed. And the man looks up and answers, oh, this is not a reward. I just want to make sure which end his head is on so I am not kicking the wrong end. Nothing is out of reach for us to accomplish if we have steadfast determination. Listen to the words of the hymn writer. Lord, I have started to walk in the light shining upon me from heaven so bright. I bade the world and his follies adieu. I've started in Jesus 
and I'm going through. Many they are who start in the race, but with the light they refuse to keep pace. Others accept it because it is new, but not very many expect to go through. I'm going through. I'll pay the price, whatever others do. I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. I'm going through. Now, look at the passage before us. The crowd surges towards the road. They push and shove to get a better look at Jesus. The city of Jericho is wall to wall with people eager to see this young carpenter from Nazareth that everyone is talking about. Now, now Jericho is no stranger to the holy and the awesome. Remember, it is at Jericho that the prostitute Rahab hide the spies of Israel. It is at Jericho that God commands Joshua to take off his sandals because he stands on holy ground. It is in Jericho that the Israelites march around seven times. And when they shout to God and blow their trumpets, the wall come tumbling down. It is going into Jericho that Jesus heals blind Bartimaeus. It is on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho that the good Samaritan comes upon the unfortunate traveler that someone robs and leaves for dead. And it is through Jericho that Jesus walked his last visit to Jerusalem a week before Calvary. So, so notice Jericho is no stranger to the holy and the awesome. Now, now, now among this crowd is Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector with a vertical challenge. Now, Zacchaeus, is short in stature. Now, now, let me ask you a question. Did his vertical challenge, did his vertical challenge, short in stature, lead Zacchaeus to use his authority as chief tax collector to prove his importance? People short in stature, and it is said, especially men, often have a Napoleon complex, inferior complex, and they try to compensate for it as they are loud and have a superior attitude toward other people. The French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte overcompensates for his short height by seeking power, war, and conquest. So did Zacchaeus' vertical challenge lead him in his quest for more power as chief tax collector? In Jesus' day, tax collectors are government-sanctioned crooks. That, tr that take bribes from the wealthy and fleece the average citizen. Read the Gospels. They link tax collector together with sinners and prostitutes. So instead of paying taxes to the Roman soldiers, Zacchaeus goes to work for them and collects taxes from his neighbors. Now, the Roman government did not pay tax collectors a salary. The law gives them the right to charge people whatever they want as long as the government receives a set tax. And any extra is belongs to the tax collectors. And the Roman soldiers, they arrest anyone who resists paying the tax collector. Zacchaeus, in other words, he can collect two or three times what a person owes and be free of blame. Zacchaeus, when you read this, he's a very lonely man. You know, Jewish tax collectors are always in contact with Gentiles, so they are ritually unclean. 
Zacchaeus cannot worship at the synagogue or put money in the offering because his money is tainted. And to the religious Jews, tax collectors are scumbags at the very bottom of humanity. No one wants to be Zacchaeus' friend because no one can trust this deceitful, greedy cheat. And the only people who want to be with Zacchaeus are tax collectors. In other words, Zacchaeus is spiritually bankrupt. Look, look, listen to verses 1 and 3. Jesus in a Jericho was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. You know, the way we live speaks volumes about the priority Jesus has in our lives. Our lives takes on greater significance when we include Jesus. And if we this morning are to accept the invitation to an unexpected meal, there are three convictions I want to lift up for us to be conscious of, and I'm through. First, our hunger to know Jesus. Now, now Zacchaeus is not happy with the direction of his life. As a tax collector, his community rejects him and his family disowns him. He cannot enter the synagogue, and he makes his fortune off the suffering of his people. But, but there is something in Zacchaeus that stirs him to determination, to action. There's something about Jesus that interests him, not what Jesus looks like, but who Jesus is. There's something about what Jesus offers that causes Zacchaeus to enter a crowd of people, though he's vertically challenged, a crowd of people who despise and hate him. I want to lift up this. Zacchaeus has a hunger to know Jesus personally. Look at verse 3. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. I want to submit this morning that Zacchaeus is every person who does not have a personal relationship with Jesus. The paradox of our choices indicates our hunger for God. It has been said, and numerous people have written this, that in the paradox of our time, that we have taller buildings but shorter tempers, wider freeways but narrower viewpoints. We spend more but have less. We buy more but enjoy it less. We have more conveniences but less time, more degrees but less sense, more knowledge but less judgment, more experts but more problems, more medicine but less wellness. We multiply our possessions but reduce our values. We talk too much, love too seldom, but hate too often. We know how to make a living but not a life. We add years to life but not life to years. We made our way to the moon and back but we have trouble crossing the street to meet a new neighbor. We conquer out of space, but not inner space. We do large things, but not better things. We have cleaned up the air, but pollute our soul. We conquer the atom, but not our prejudice. We write more, but learn less. We plan more, but accomplish less. We build more computers to hold more information, but we have less communication. We learn to rush, but not to wait. We are big people, but small character. These are the days of two incomes, but more divorce. We have fancier houses, but broken home. We laugh too little, but get angry too much. We watch TV too much, but read too little and pray too seldom. In other words, the paradox of our choices indicates that we have a hunger for God 
Are you searching for something to brighten your life? Are you longing for something to relieve earthly strife? Are you searching? Are you seeking from day to night? Seek Jesus. He's comfort and life. Seek Jesus today. He's not far away. He's waiting to hear you say, come in. If you're asking for a life that's filled with happiness, seek Jesus and you will be blessed. Second, changing our position changes our condition. There's something missing in Zacchaeus' life. Zacchaeus is a desperate man. He is a man of dignity, chief tax collector. Yet Zacchaeus runs down the road. Get him in a picture. You see this little vertically challenged man running down the road to get in position. Desperate people run. Desperate people run. Run, children climb trees for fun and play. Adults climb trees in desperation. A mean dog is chasing them or they're trying to escape a flood. Climbing a tree for Zacchaeus is an act of desperation. In other words, he has an itch in his heart that his wealth cannot scratch. And when Zacchaeus hears that Jesus is in town, it humbles Zacchaeus to see Jesus. Look at verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. The reformer Martin Luther says, God created the world out of nothing. Therefore, until a man or woman is nothing, God can make nothing out of us. Humility makes us nothing, so God can make something out of us. Philippians 2 and 5 says, Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And Henry David Thoreau says, It is only by forgetting yourself that you draw near to God. Ego and pride keeps us from God. Ego, E-G-O, is to ease God out. Pride works for our downfall. You hear Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. God wants humility. James 4 and 6 says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So Zacchaeus d demonstrates inner change by outward actions. Zacchaeus demonstrates inner change by outward actions. And that's what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We show that there has been an inner change by our outward actions, how we live life every day. After his experience with Jesus, notice inner change is expressed by outward actions. Notice after his experience with Jesus, he gives half of his wealth to the poor and he gives back four times, Lord have mercy, to those he overcharges on their taxes. Zacchaeus finally lives the meaning of his name. You want to know the meaning of his name is interesting. The meaning of his name is the righteous one. Wow. <laughs> and when we change our position, it changes our condition and shows by what we do. Jesus wants to transform us. You hear 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creature. All things pass away. And behold, all things become new. We take on the new. New ideas and new ideals. New inspiration and new aspiration. New dedication and new determination. We show our faith as we change our behavior. And I like the way the hymn writer puts it. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus 
came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I have sought. Since Jesus came into my heart, I have ceased from my wandering and going astray. Since Jesus came into my heart and my sins, which were many, are now washed all away. Since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy over my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. And third and finally, Jesus will drop by. Let me close. Zacchaeus' situation, when you read the 19th chapter, seems hopeless. Now, here's the picture. Get it in your mind. Get a mental picture of this. Here is a short man <laughs> behind a massive crowd. You got that picture? A short man behind a massive crowd. And most of us, we have given up. I can't see, so I might as well just go on. I can't see with all those purple people. I can't see. He's vertically challenged. He has a physically, he has a short stature. And look at the crowd. I started off talking about determination, right? So let's close. Most of us would have given up, but not Zacchaeus. You see, he is determined. His determination is to see Jesus. So look what he does. He climbs a tree. You remember that old camp song? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. So he finds a way, determination. He finds a way around the barrier. Go back to obstacles, obstruction, we can tackle them. That is between him and the one who can make him complete. Look at his hunger. Look at changing his condition. And because of his persistence, here's the key. And because of Zacchaeus' persistence, because of his determination, Jesus comes to Zacchaeus' house. Look at verse 5. And when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called Zacchaeus by name. Zacchaeus, Jesus says, quick, come down. Right now, for today, not tomorrow, but right now, I'm going to be a guest in your home today. And Jesus knows that every last one of us, we need a relationship with him. Jesus stops the procession to talk to Zacchaeus. And can't you just imagine the citizens of Jericho expect Jesus to condemn Zacchaeus, this, this, this chief tax collector, this chief? Can't you hear them whispering to each other? Oh, Zacchaeus, he's going to finally get what he deserves. Jesus is going to let him have it with both barrels. But thank God this morning, Jesus did not come to condemn us sinners but to welcome us, to accept us, to save us. And instead of condemning Zacchaeus, listen to what Jesus says to him. Let us go to your house. The religious crowd turns against Jesus and criticizes Jesus for going home with a sinner. What an unexpected meal. Jesus becomes Zacchaeus' friend. And I wanted to tell us this morning that Jesus is our friend. Jesus accepts us. Jesus forgives us. Jesus includes us. Jesus loves us. Jesus is our friend. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows all about our struggles. And he will guide us till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. And Jesus always drops by to those who need him. And I'm glad that I'm a part of the crowd that needs Jesus every day. You see, I need Jesus. I can't make it by myself. 
And Jesus drops by to let us know that we are included. He drops by to accept us like we are for his kingdom. And the challenge for us this morning says Jesus has accepted us. Let us, Lord, help us to accept each other. He has forgiven us. So let us go and forgive, love, accept others. Because as our friend, he has accepted us. And all of God's people this morning said, amen. Zacchaeus today, Jesus said, I'm home with you. And that is Jesus' invitation for each of us. And as Jesus has accepted us, Lord, give us new eyes to see, new hearts to love others as they are and as they can become. Go now in the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week.